Okay, the recording has started. Okay. All right, the meeting is now called to order today, August 1st, I mean, August 10th, sorry, 2023. Um, full council meeting of the Council, council for Minnesotans of African Heritage. Time is 6.03. And the meeting will begin now. We will start by having a roll call. Okay, Chair Doe. Present. Can everyone mute themselves? Yeah. Thank you. Um, Council Member uh, Treasurer Mullins. Present. Secretary Adams Lee. Here. Council Member Daniels Joasame. Council Member Crawford did contact Ash, uh, stating that he had a, a prior meeting, but will be joining us just a little bit late. Okay. Council member Nadi. Present. Council member Mayor Winston. Council member Dukes. Present. And council member Dahir. Senator Fate, Representative Frazier, Representative Hudson. That concludes the attendance. Okay, thank you, thank you, Linda. And moving along, we have uh, our agenda need to adopt our agenda. As you notice too, it, it, our agenda would be pretty, we're not, we don't have a compact agenda today, as you notice, we, we, we did not include the uh, presentation from our, from the state agency for this meeting. So we don't have a compact agenda today. We just focus on what we have. I hope all of you had the opportunity to review that. If you did, and if you have any questions or comments, otherwise I will entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved, Mullins. Second. Okay. So second. Okay, let's we'll move and second. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none. Let's move on to our minutes. Did you all have? Chance to look at that as well. I have I have one one, one thing I saw here. I just want to bring it up because I think it, it makes a difference. That uh, let's see here. It says Chair Doe was reminded that was something. There. So I just want a clarification. Whether was it me being reminded or just us as a group was being reminded, Linda, I think it was either by you or something about, about knowing that we are, we don't, we don't uh, do programs as far as the council, the role of the council. You remember that? Uh, let's see. I think you made the reminder to the council that we are not a programming organization. Uh, yes, so and, and that's a, a reminder that um, I believe the former uh, chair had made as well so that people will understand that we're not in the programming space. We're in the policy uh, making space. So okay. that was yeah, so that was a reminder that you made. Okay, okay, oh God. That is what it is. Okay, any other observations? Okay, then I will entertain a motion. So 
So moved. Okay. Any second? The clock is ticking. <laughs> second, Mom. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So it's been moved and seconded. Uh, we will adopt the the minutes as it is. Any discussions? All right. Hearing none. Let's go to our next item here. Will be our financial report. Treasurer Mullins, over to you. Linda, are you able to share this? For me, sorry, I had to hop on a different computer. My other one wouldn't turn on. Um, and forgive me, you all, I'm a little raspy. I'm fighting something over here. Um, so my voice is pretty much gone. Thank you. Um, so as you all can see, we are sitting at an unobligated of 70000 of our $795,000 budget for this fiscal year. Um, a few things that I just want to make note of, because I'm sure there are questions there, the negative numbers in the 41160, um, 41400, and 43000. Um, I did have a conversation with Linda and staff, and that is just a matter of... Um, money needing to be moved around. We ended up spending more in those categories than we had originally budgeted for. Um, and so they are working with the accounting staff over there to get money moved around to clear out those negative numbers. Um, but outside of that, we are looking good for the start of the fiscal year. If anybody has any questions for me, you can go ahead. Right. So, so, so just, just this. As far as moving money around, that affects as far as the, the account description, right? So, if there's something under, other operating costs that we need to move, we they'll usually put it in another description, right? Yes. Yeah, so, how it works is at the beginning mm -hmm. of the fiscal year, SEMA works with the staff over at FMR admin and they kind of do a projected amount of how much they plan, plan, to, plan to spend in each of these categories throughout the fiscal year. Um, and this is just, it could be based on how much was spent in the prior year or if we know there are some things coming up. So none of these numbers are set in stone. Um, you can always add to and take away if it looks like we're not going to spend as much in a category or we need to... <clears throat> we need to add to a different category. So that's all that happened here. Um, we planned for a certain amount, but ended up going over that. And so we would just move money from one of the other categories that we probably projected a little higher in, which it looks like we've got 49,000 um, in the, I think the PT line. So I'm sure some yeah. money could be moved from there um, <clears throat> to cover those negative numbers. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Any other comments, questions, observations? Okay, thank you, Treasurer Mullins, for thank the you. Yeah, and just a reminder too, we don't take a vote on this because it's it, it is uh, it's pretty fluid, it moves, changes, so we don't take a vote on that. All right. Do we have any public comment today? So we do have one. Well, I just want to welcome is that uh, Walters, right? I think you said. Let's make sure yes. he's here. Right. Okay. Mr. Waters, welcome to the meeting. As how you usual. Doing? Yes. How you doing? <laughs> We're glad to have you. Yep. Thank you oh, for being here. Thank you. Right. Is this yes. open mic or is, what, what is this part? <laughs> no, this part I'm just I'm just welcoming you. That's, oh, okay. No I, I thought we had a, a public comment, but uh, we we done. So. Oh, okay. Well, you, you, if you mind, uh, just one quick thing. 
Um, sure. I, I did send Linda and Theo a um, lawsuit that was filed by the same attorney that that successfully won the affirmative action case in the Supreme Court. And the reason why I sent that is because the attack on affirmative action has now gone into the private sector. In the particular email I sent, Linda, if you didn't receive it, let me know. I can resend it. It's about a 79-page uh, lawsuit because it was filed in federal court in Atlanta. It has to do with a company called Fearless, uh, Fearless Fund, which is a black-owned female fund. And the attorney is claiming that his clients, his three clients, which are named as A, B, and C in the lawsuit, have been discriminated because they can't apply for these funds. So it was more or less an informational uh, email to say the attack in the private sector has begun. Oh. Yes, and, and I believe that we did see that. And uh, Theo can speak to some of the things that he's going to be doing in terms of the, the affirmative action issue, because we do see it as a major problem that is going to uh, flow and roll over into the corporate sector. So thanks for sending that. Yeah, no um, problem. Yeah, yeah, and and thanks for just being our supporter. I have to I have to say that because you're you you're always there, so appreciate. Well, I you. I remember the board twelve years ago. You almost almost got wiped out. So <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that is so true. I remember that time, even though I wasn't on the board, but I do remember yeah. when that was happening. Yeah. So I thank you, Mr. Chairman, for indulging me. So I'm gonna go back into listening mode. Okay, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. And, and Mr. Chair, we can send that also to the entire board if people are interested in reading that. Yes, uh, we can send it. Please do that because, yeah, I, I'll be interested in going through it myself so other board members can see it. Uh, if you don't need to have it, of course, just let us know. But I think it will be okay for you to just share, share it yeah. with the board member. Okay, thanks. Okay, we will start with our unfinished business. And the first item there I put, we'll be talking about a little bit uh, council, council member participation. We In the executive meeting, we talked about this a little bit. And it, the idea is that, you know, I think council member Mullins made that point, which was very, you know, very touching in terms of the purpose that we serve coming on this board and how we can maximize that in terms of our participation. And my major concern is as long as we're on the board, we're here to do some work, right? Either directly with our, with our communities or indirectly with other communities. And then we need to share that information here when we come. So we are all on the same page in what's happening and then being able to determine how do we provide the support that is needed from the council standpoint? And not only that, also to follow up, you know, what kind of impact that had have uh, on the issues that have been presented. So just look, just going forward in terms of what I see us doing on this council is um, again, basically having each board member having the opportunity in your own engagement in the community to come to the board members prepare to at least uh, present something to us at the same time it will be important for us to identify community organizations i'll get into that a little bit as far as they having the opportunity to come to the board as well and sharing with us some of the things they're doing and, and then we determine how we can support that so and this is again just just going forward does have a seat i want to just go to and hear your thoughts about what does that look like? Uh, I strongly believe sitting on the board, having a two minute time to to share something that we can talk about is it, it, it's, it's worth it because it shows your participation. So like someone said, we're not just having a meeting because and just what, you know, a couple of people just talking, so to speak, because we all have we bring value to this council. That's, that's the first thing. Every, each one of us brings some value to this council. And how does that value manifest itself? That's what I'm trying to bring up, just trying to encourage us to, hey, this is what we have. This is how we can move forward. 
and this is how we can see our work having impact on our communities because that's that's our mandate so that impact our community one way or the other so i wanted to, i wanted to open that up and hear your thoughts um on council member participation even if it means you know determining that look i don't have four hours to spend or i got only one hour to spend and just being able to share that information so we know exactly you know where you are at and we'll be able to work with that council member dukes i see your hand up thank you chair door um so i've been thinking about this for a while and um have talked a little bit to uh linda about this and um, i'm really interested in how we can partner my organization can partner with the council to really engage parents in our community um you know i just think that there are ways we have already prepped um, a lot of the families that we work with to uh, engage at you know a policy level uh, do some advocacy work but you know the problem is that you know we don't always know where to focus our attention and so we only show up at the capitol when you know there are specific things like early childhood scholarships you know that we rally around but i'm really interested in understanding you know what are those policy um, agendas that affect our whole community and where we need to be showing up and how can we partner with the council to help prep and train uh, the community to be engaged and to show up. And so I'm consistently um, interested in how we, we explore that. Very, very, very good point. And, and I share that in, in, in that, yes, those are, those are the kind of thing I, I'm talking about we can do. And we can just identify what does that look like? Does it mean we can have, you know, training, uh, legislative training, how to approach uh, legislators and how to, you know, write uh, leak, uh, documents that will be effective in terms of uh, the the issues that we try to articulate. But yeah, that and, and we just need to figure out how, what does that look like? And then we implement that. Good point, Council Member Dukes. And Council Member Jude. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I thank you, Councilmember Dukes, for the work you guys do. I didn't know much until I came to Aguila, how big it was, and I saw <laughs> dollars rising and rising, $500,000, $1 million. I think you guys got up to $3 million. Unbelievable. In, in 30 <laughs> seconds, they have $1 million. I checked that. <laughs> I've really never seen ships. something like that in Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> relationships <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah that was great and there's a Dana Ross uh, it was it was rocking my wife was I mean she was that was one of the happiest days I mean it was just something else so thank you <laughs> um yeah so we have been talking about um, how to engage the community and how to be proactive and uh, so my suggestion is uh, we should um create a template, there's no um, need to keep reinventing the wheel. So when we create a template um, on, on both sides, one is um, internally, how do we connect with other organizations um, who are doing great things and to tap into the energy and what they're doing. And the second one is uh, for any organization that wants to connect with us, uh, what do they, need, do they need to do? So um, it's not all that um, um, well orchestrated now for people to key in and connect with us. And it takes a lot of energy uh, from the staff and also from the council members to articulate, to know what to do and how to do it, to initiate and so on and so forth. But once we start, once we have a template, it becomes a lot easier. I know there are many organizations in the state who are doing great jobs. And uh, uh, since we're not into programming, we can just tap into what they're doing and then amplify that. So depending on what we want to achieve, and that's part of the, the plan and the prep we can do. Uh, once we do it, it becomes a lot easier. And uh, the job of those organizations, um, you know, as they do great things in the community, uh, we can be part of it and we can bring it uh, 
closed or even would become a kind of um, a hub that um, other organizations can also connect and learn. And then um, how about uh, uh, organizations uh, working together, which is not very common in black community. So we can also be part of the uh, our initiative. Just at the end of the day, it's just to serve our people better. And if we can um, in any way facilitate that or become environment where that prospers, uh, it's going to help all of us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. It, it, that. That makes perfect sense. That's why it's creating some type of, type, type of template. Now, let me add this piece to it, too, because remember, uh, we tried to put down a lot of issues and form issues group at one point. Um, that really didn't kick off, of course, just because of everything else that was happening. But what it sounds like, think, let's think about it. Do we need to just narrow that and be more intentional about specific actions that we can take depending on the council members uh, availability in terms of how to work with these groups then to just list a number of issues and try to figure out which issues that we we address or not anyone can weigh in on that i mean it, it, because we did have quite a bit quite a few issues that we have listed right and we're asking for volunteers and and, and folks to Make a point, Linda. Go ahead. You, you, got, you got the floor. You're muted. You're muted, Linda. Linda. <laughs> so, Flockamy and I were actually having that conversation um, again today about the issue groups and what that plan should look like. Um, so, we will come to the board at the next meeting with here's where we think we should be going. Um, then also, we know that we have the five priorities that are umbrella priorities. And so we will need to uh, bring some potential key priorities to the board also and so that you guys can react to those. So, uh, so Theo will be working on that. But then also getting the input from the board in terms of what else would should the board be work should the board and the council be working on so i know homelessness was one of the things that was brought up at the last meeting but we are looking at that and right now uh flock of me is planning a few listening sessions so that we can get community input and we can bring that back to the board to help us determine how we should move forward with that. So we'll try to make sure that we get that information to you prior to next month's meeting, because next month's meeting is the second half of, of the retreat. So we'll get that information to you beforehand. Uh, so we're so we're addressing it. Yeah, addressing it. OK, good, good, good. That, that's good. Any other thoughts, comments, observations on this? But I think we're, we're, we're on the right track because once we get that down, then it comes down to now implementing how we're going to address those things. So I appreciate that. And I appreciate all of you for at least giving us some thoughts as well. So I'm not the only one thinking about this. We all are in this boat together <laughs> and we got to make it happen. OK. All right. Any any questions? So, so the next on agenda is, is about the charter and council member handbook. And I know we talked about it also in the executive meeting. I'm not sure if everyone had an opportunity to, to go through that, but I think it's important that we do have it. What it, what it means is uh, creating a way where we can have that information. So just council members can know the, the, the roles, the specific roles and responsibilities that we have as far as our participation and non-participation as well. So if, if we are on the council, for instance, you know, if there, there are absences or reason you cannot be here for whatever reason that we, we understand and how does that impact the rest of the council members' participation, we need to know. So I know, Linda, you were not able to get that, but event, I, I'm, I'm looking forward for us to, to get that so we can share it. <laughs> Make sure we share. You want to say something on that? Okay. I do. And I was just able to find the old copy. 
So I will send that out. However, it, it actually came out of the attorney general's office. Um, yes. But I do have an email out to see if there's an updated copy. If not, I'll make sure that I get that um, the old one out to all of the council members before the next meeting. So everyone will have an opportunity to read up on it. OK, thank you very much. Yeah, I, I just think it's important so we we're on the same page with that. Thank you. OK, any any questions or thoughts, observations? OK, the next thing here is the strategic plan uh, follow up meeting. So we discussed that a little bit and. It was great. There were a few of us at the strategic planning session in person. Councilmember Dukes, you know, and, and Crawford and, and Natty. But we had a very good discussion and we want this to be across the board. So each council member is aware of what we're, we're thinking about in our priorities that were listed. I think we have four main priorities, uh, one of which I believe we're already implementing as far as um, strengthening our organizational systems. We got already in place approval to add two staff members members to, to the team to make sure we're engaging the community. We have our budget approved pretty much, right? So now what needs to happen is we're just appealing to each of us to be in this next meeting because I see that as the meeting where we develop some action plans, including what we're talking about. So once we can do that, develop those action plans, then we can move forward in terms of the different approaches that we need to take. So by way of basically, this is going to be probably an hour and a half, I believe, Linda, or two hours. It's going to be two hours. They'll start at 6.30, so we'll have, we'll have to add an extra half hour on the end of the meeting. Right, right. Yes, so any, any, any questions on that? What do you think about our efforts with the strategic plan as a, as a guide books to move forward with what we're trying to do and your participation in it. Council member Nadi or do you can Hi, share your um, thoughts about this is yeah go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh this is I think um thank you guys for your time. Um I that's something I was really looking forward to participate. Unfortunately the time doesn't work for me. But um, mm -hmm. if there are any other way that I can give my input, I'll be happy to. Oh, great, 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 great. Yeah. So, so, we, it, so this follow up too. That's another opportunity. Um, but you know, having your participation is huge. So we would love to have everyone there to be able to weigh in on what we need to do. So I appreciate that your willingness to do that. Okay, any any comments? Uh, this is uh, our council member Nadi. So um, the participation was pretty much uh, uh, active and uh, very rewarding. So I was, I'm not sure if there was any kind of summary of that uh, meeting. Um, if, um, if um, um, the consultant can share that before the meeting so that those who didn't uh, participate can have some ideas of the summary of what we discuss and um, you know, get them ready. I think it's very important that everybody uh, participates and, um, and they have uh, maximum input as much as possible. So if that can be done, uh, that could help uh, their level of, um, um, of, of knowledge about what happened um, on that day and how they, will, uh, how they will get prepared for the next one. Absolutely, Jude, uh, Council Member Nadi, that's a very, very good point. Can we have that done, uh, uh, Linda? Yes. Just, yes, I'm sure we can. <laughs> so yeah, so we get a summary so everyone can get to see or read at least what we did and then have some full thoughts about what to bring to the table when we come for our next meeting. Okay, so we have that sent out uh, to all of you. Thank you. Okay, basically that's that's where we at with our finished business. 
I know our time. You, the, don't you all just we we got we got enough time to deal with the issues. So this meeting, like I said, is not going to be as compact as what we foresee coming up, but definitely we can have our discussions here. So let's move into our new business. New business is basically uh, the vice chair position that became open. And just some background on that, I had sent some information out to share that we were thinking about doing an appointment, but it turned out I went through looking through uh, the guidebook again, the board members handbook, just to make sure we're on the same page. But then I got uh, quite a few people who were interested in the position and I figured, you know, we got to put this to a vote just to make sure that it's pretty open and transparent, everybody participating. So today we're going we're gonna to take a vote on the vice chair position. We have three candidates three person who expressed their, their willingness to be vice chair. So let's see, I think we would start, we would, we would call the names and just have them share with us. First of all, the intent of reason why they wanna be vice chair so everybody can get familiar and then we will go to voting. And Linda, can you share how we are gonna do the voting process? Yes, so I will be putting a link in the chat box for you to click on. Uh, and when you click on that, you're clicking into a form and then you just select one candidate and that will automatically uh, send that information to me. I will communicate to uh, Chair Doe and then he will announce who is going to be the vice chair for the upcoming uh, two years. Okay, so uh, we are, yes, we are, let's see how many more we have, one, two, three, four, five. Yes, so we do have a quorum, right? Just We have yeah. six members. We have six, so, so we do have a quorum, all right. So we can carry on that vote. All right, so the candidates we have are Council Member Crawford, who we know is not, on right now, or is he on? I don't think that he's joined us yet. And then Council Member Nadi, and then Council Member Lee. So those are the three candidates that we have. Okay, so let's let's you know start with uh, who Council Member Lee or Council Member Nadi. We want to just. Each of you got two minutes. You can talk to us. <laughs> as you as, as you all know, I mean, basically, the vice chair is it's pretty pretty um, in line with the chair, definitely. So the role of the, it just is distinguished because one is the chair and the other the vice, but pretty much the expectation will be the same. So, who want to go first? I try to be very democratic in the process, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Except you want me to call your name. Okay, Council Member Nadi. Uh, um, yeah, thank you, um, Chair, for the opportunity um, for me it is all about uh, our community and participation and what we can do to um, support our community and empower our community. So uh, for the past four or five years I've been in the council, I've been pretty much active and also I've seen a lot of development and the progress we've made. I'm just um, trying to step in and uh, support what uh, we've done so far and also bring in new ideas and new way to engage our community and bring in our people to participate. Uh, I've been in, involved in different things. Exa example is uh, during this uh, legislative, legislative session, I was there at the Capitol uh, most of the time and then see what other communities, uh, ethnic gr groups are doing. I know that we, we are missing out in many ways 
And uh, we needed to be more active in that direction, especially when it comes to funding and the uh, resource inflow to the community. That's one area I know, because it's not just about me, it is about our community. And we know that uh, a, lot of, a lot of us struggle. So there's so much challenge in our community. And how do we empower them? And it's not just by word of mouth, but it's by action. So what do we do to uh, help them get the resources they need, help them to get the access they need, help them to be the best they can be in the community, and help them to be competitive. And we see uh, what the Supreme Court has done uh, in uh, affirmative action. And also, the, when this gets to, to them again, I think they are still going to uh, kill this uh, uh, effort we are put in to create equity. So what do we do on our own? So if we start early to prepare our people, to empower our people, to provide those resources and fight for them, so even when that comes, it will be painful but it will not be as bad as it is today. So these are the areas I'm looking. I'm just looking beyond what the council, where we are right now, but what we can create that opportunity and that environment for us to thrive and know that uh, towards the end, we are there for our people and our people will be the best. And then they take advantage of what is what belongs to them because we are missing a lot, a lot in action. And I think we can do better when all of us join hand and support what the council is doing. So that's why I want to be the vice and continue to uh, be the best I can and uh, see that uh, we as black people in this state, that we get what is due to us and we flourish and we make progress. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Nadi. All right, Council Member Lee. I am not sure if Ad Council Member Adams Lee is still on the call. Uh, she she was in her car and was having some difficulty with her communication, so she might not still be on. Okay, and, and, and Council Member Crawford is not here either. Yes, um, Chair Chair Doe, did they both speak to you though um, about their desire to? Yes. To be okay. So, I'm just wondering. Somebody else just joined us. Oh, Council Member Dahir just joined. So excellent. So I'm just wondering if you could maybe provide just a little synopsis of what they told you, just so that the members could have um, have something to go on as they vote. Sure. Well, Council Member Lee, we, we didn't go very much into detail, but she did express her desire uh, as far as her experience in, in working in such an organization, the value that she brings from working many, many, many years on behalf of people of African heritage. And generally, that's what she she put forward that she can bring that to the council, and and, and be more more valuable in that role as vice chair. As far as council member Crawford, he one of the things he expressed in 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 conjunction with working with people of African heritage was that we need to make sure we're expanding our reach particularly in greater Minnesota as well. So we are not just focused on the Twin Cities or in surroundings, but we are actually getting involved in other communities outside of the Twin Cities. And he sees himself as some someone who is pivotal, pivotal in, in making that happen. His role as chair would bring that to bear in terms of uh, the, the kind of work that he's doing currently, you know, but he also uh, serve on you know different boards and serving leadership positions and, and and so he wants to bring that experience to bear here as as vice chair as well. So, okay. All right. 
So we will go ahead. So maybe we'll do like a, when you send that link out, let me ask first, any questions, any, any thoughts, questions from anyone? Welcome council member Dahi. Yeah, thank you. Well, it's been a while since I've been back. Um, so I'm glad to be back with the group. Yeah, yeah, yes. Glad to have you back, definitely. Well, just so you know, we're in the process of voting for a vice chair. I think uh -huh. you heard. I you picked heard. up. Yeah. You did? OK. Yes. Sounds good. All right. Would so the want... link is in the chat. All right. Yep. So hopefully, hopefully you'll be able to just click on it, and it should take you directly to the form. Yeah, that's exactly what it did. Oh, perfect. So while we do that, let's just here. Let me let me see here. I might. <clears throat> okay, just one second here. Yeah. Okay, maybe we should have, can we have a one staff member maybe do one report now and then we can, you can take your time to tally the votes. Okay, it, it'll, it'll be quick. So uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have six council members on now and um, I'm just waiting for one person to vote. And unfortunately, Adam Slee dropped off. Um, and so, uh, block of me. I'm sorry. Here. I'm trying here. It's, I'm still trying to access the link you sent. Yeah, if you click on the link, it should take you directly to the form. I can try to email it to you too. I don't know if we can do that or not, Linda. Yeah. Um, um, council, so, council member. Yeah, because my chat is still blank. So I'm not sure if I'm even on a set. I don't know. I'm not seeing anything in my chat. Sorry. OK, so you don't you're not seeing it in your chat. OK, fl flock of me. If you could just go ahead and start on your report, I will go ahead and email that to uh, council member. Uh, Daniel Shuasame. Okay. Sounds can, good. You, can you also email that to Councilmember Lee and Proffer? Would that be? Well, no. I mean, technically, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if, because now she's not a part of the meeting. So, but it's your call. If you want me to, I will, it's at your pleasure. Yeah, just, just email it to them too. Uh, may I just state something before I proceed to cast my vote? I would have sure. really prefer all of the candidates are here to speak for themselves before we vote, um, especially the folks who are seeking the position. Not, I'm not talking about all the council members. It would have been great to hear from them firsthand. That's just my opinion. I will cast my vote, though. But I just wanted that stated on. Okay. Well... well <laughs> Go ahead. No, I, I'm saying that's that's a very good point, but you can uh, fill in with the legality of it, Linda. No, I was going to say, well, the meeting was changed to Thursday, so I know in terms of uh, Council Member Crawford, uh, he already had another meeting that was booked on Thursday because we don't normally have our meetings on Thursday. And then uh, Council Member Adams Lee was actually on the call but um, her system kept breaking up. And so I'm, I'm just assuming that uh, she was not able to get her connection together. She was actually the first one on the call. So I just wanted to mention that, that it wasn't uh, one of those things that they did not want to be here today. But- No, uh, I'm not false. 
I'm not faulting them at all. I'm just saying I mm-hmm. would prefer if we moved the meeting to a time that they could be on. But I also wanted to know, is there a reason why the vote couldn't take place next month? Is there a reason why it has to take place today? Um, just wondering. No, no, that that's a good question. And and I can, you know, certainly listen to other council members, what your thoughts? No, there's nothing that's, uh, there's no significance as far as it has to be or not, but it was just scheduled that way. And I, and I realized too the timing of it because we changed the meeting time from Tuesday to today. So what is your will and pleasure? I know we've taken the uh, other, other council members. Council member Crawford just joined. Okay. 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 You know, that's a good question there. So let's, Council member Crawford, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Is he, is he on? Yes, I'm on, thank you. Oh, great, great. We, we are at a point of voting and, and the one concern was raised as far as you addressing the, this body, your intent to become vice chair. So you, I, I'll give you some time to express that. Absolutely. Well, thank you all for giving me the opportunity. I apologize. Thursdays are pretty hard. I got a, another standing meeting that started at 530. Um, right. My goals and wishes to be vice chair, obviously, is to continue to move forward the efforts of the council uh, to continue that broad reach of the rural communities, as well as building a broader opportunity to unite us all in our efforts for African Americans and African people to live, work, and play in Minnesota and have an opportunity for home ownership, for growth, and higher education. And I'll pause there. Okay. All right. Could so it we... looks. Go ahead. I was going to say it looks like all council members have voted. Do you want to proceed with the elections as uh, stated and proposed in the agenda? You know what I would like is for us to can we can we reach out to Council Member Lee right now? Okay. Well, the other thing, everybody, well, we'd have to do a revote, but that's whatever you would like to do. I'll see if I can reach, reach her. Um, Chair, maybe we could go on with the reports and while I try to reach her, just yes. to keep the mo- meeting moving. So I can go. Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. Happy Thursday, Friday, mm-hmm. Junior. Um, I have, there's been a lot of things happening, a lot of activities happening since the last time we met um, as a full council. Um, I just want to extend my gratitude again for the folks who attended um, the OLM gala. Um, as well yeah so that was really great um, for us and then we did have little africa that was this past weekend that was also something that um we some of us attended um and i just want to highlight a couple items um as linda mentioned she and i have been talking i have two screens so if i look on the other way it's looking at your faces and not the camera actually let me just move this so i can look at everyone's face um as Linda mentioned, we have been talking about issue groups as well as community. Um, Council Member Lee just joined, um, as well as um, community opportunities that we are going to be attending for the rest of this fiscal year. Um, so, again, if there are opportunities or items or places 
or groups or people that you think that we should be involved with or connecting to, please feel free to connect with myself um, or Linda just so that we have that information. Um, that's really helpful for me um, as things pop up. Um, yeah, so just kind of mentioning that and I know that Chair Doe did mention also um, if there are sp specific groups that you yourself are a part of, um, please feel free to let me know. And I know that we're I'm familiar with some of the things that um, so a lot of the council members do, but this is just another reminder that um, we definitely want to be supporting some of the work that you're doing. Um, I also want to extend my gratitude to some of you. I know a lot of I have some council members who send me job opportunities and things like that. So very, very helpful for the bulletin. Um, and just a quick note that I had mentioned at the um, executive council was a couple of things that are happening. Uh, shoot, at the end of the month, or actually next week of Tuesday, um, there is a deadline here for um, to be a grant reviewer for Deed. So they're looking for community grant reviewers. Um, so I will put that link in the chat um, and that's so that you can share that with other folks if you don't have the capacity. But um, something that we do know is a lot of times, um, you know, when things are when our voices are not in some of these um, spaces, the folks who get the grants may not look like us. So um, we just want to make sure, especially with this huge surplus, that we are represented in those grant reviews. So um, please feel free to either apply. Um, or share, I applied myself. Um, and then the Ignite Business Summit is also, and, oh, excuse me, so let me just back up. That is due on the 15th. So I would encourage you to fill it out now since we're all on the computer. Um, and then the next event um, is just something that is something that you, um, I think you have to pay for this, but I just wanted to highlight it. It is with the, Yes, Linda just said the best way to understand grants is to be a reviewer. I highly, highly agree. Um, and I have my own personal opinions too on grants. So if you ever want to talk to me about that, uh, let me know. Um, but uh, so there's another event uh, with the the Black Chamber of Commerce, which is yeah. the Ignite yeah, Business Anthony, Summit. And that is... Um, <laughs> Go eat. <laughs> I love that. Uh, so the Ignite Business Summit is the 15th as well. So um, I just wanted to highlight that in case some people wanted to do some networking um, and just have another opportunity to go. That's something that we don't necessarily, we don't necessarily highlight things that people have to pay for in our bulletin, um, but I just wanted to highlight it for our um, board members here in case you are worth thinking about it or know folks who are looking for some opportunities like that. Um, that is all I can think about right now. For some reason, I'm drawing a blank. I, yes, that's it. Unless it, I'll take questions if you have questions, but that's all I have right now. Any questions? Yeah, Chair, this is the Council Member Nadi. Um, just um, in the spirit of engagement, uh, we have Igbo Fest coming up this Saturday. So you don't have to pay for anything there. You just come and enjoy cultural display, food, music, dancing, networking, and it's huge. So it's in North Hennepin Community College uh, this Saturday. So I advise people, if you get the invitation, it says like, I think 12 for one, but it should come around two, three. So uh, there's African time. But once it hits, uh, it's really pretty much heavy till it's dusky. So you can just uh, start, you know, stop by and uh, have fun. It's pretty much a big uh, festival um, in the north suburb here. Did, did you say one, two, three o'clock? Is that what you what you? Mean? I I said two, three. Yeah, you've come between yeah. from two and above. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. Any other questions, comments? Councilmember Lee, are, are you are you on? Yes, I am. Okay, so we were going through the voting process and we wanted to hear from each of the candidates and thank you for coming back on. Uh, 
just to express your desire to become vice chair before we complete the process. So you have some time. Um, I didn't come back on for that, but yeah, I have some time. So, I mean, I think I, I think we already did that, didn't we? No, we well, have, I have to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> did you get the link? I did. Oh, OK. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was just a concern to, uh, that uh, council members wanted to hear from you directly as far as uh, what 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 you foresee or what your vision is to be uh, the vice chair. I think that my vision is um, pretty much has always been the same since I've started um, working with the council at that time of Black Minnesotans with Lester Collins um, in 1995, 96, up through today. And, um, you know, I think that um, being a person um, of color, specifically African American born in this country, um, descendants of slaves, it is extremely important to me um, to, to um, look at how policies that our community, our forefathers and mothers who've died so that we could have the freedoms that we have are being over, you know, they're being overturned, that we are regressing. I think one of the council persons um, said earlier, we're talking, uh, well, one of our um, public uh, community persons were talking about affirmative action. And I, as I noted in our executive meeting, it is um, unsettling to me to um, notice and know that as a child growing up in the civil rights movement, watching my grandparents and parents march and and have sit-ins and walk-ins and um, walking together because they were striking buses because we couldn't sit as human beings together with other human beings because of the color of our skin. And here we are 50 years later, um, many of these rights are being undone. So my thoughts around, my vision around the Council of Black Minnesotans is to continue the work in the 21st century that Lester and others um, had um, for us to work together in the work that we um, have done in Minnesota. Um, and and to be both from a community level here locally as well as nationally. It is my um, goal, my dream to um, assist in not allowing these things, these laws and policies to be overturned and to stand with those. And, and, and again, if I have to march again, if I have to sit in again, um, to assure that my grandchildren and my children and your children and grandchildren do not have to return to the cotton field because that's exactly where we're headed if we don't get a hold of this and to understand how the policy um, does make a difference because, um, you know, as one of our forefathers said, um, if you're not at the table, you might be on the menu. And I, I don't intend to be, um, or, or my descendants, or, or any folks that look like us who have died so that we could have the freedoms that we do, to look at the policies that are impacting our children. We are losing our children in the school system. Um, we are just about back where we were 50 years ago. We're talking about, you know, um, land of McGovern and, and Humphrey. Um, you know, how did we get here and how um, have we lost so, had lost as much ground as we have? Um, and then the other component that's very near and dear to my heart is that, um, you know, I don't mean to offend anyone, but I'm, a, as you all probably know me pretty well, you know, I'm going to speak my piece. And um, 
we don't have any notable leaders in Minnesota. We do not have any notable leaders in Minnesota who are willing to speak the truth and willing to stand for policy, write policy, support others who have policies that represent us in a way that is not just rhetoric. This is not about being a rhetoric. It's not about having a political um, leg up. It's about saving lives, educating our children. We now know that with affirmative action being overturned, there are going to be immense amount of doors slammed in our face. As the brother said, it's already happening. Um, it's, you know, in, in, in the small business, in corporate America, um, it's going to happen in schools. It's going to happen in our workplace. And we have to have a made up mind to do what's right because it's right to not allow, um, you know, um, the things that we are the privileges and the and the rights, the freedoms that we have um, currently to be taken from us um, because we're asleep at the wheel or we're too afraid that we're going to offend somebody. They are offending us. They are offending us when they overturn um, affirmative action. They are offending us when they take away our rights to parent our own children and to have um you know be able for our children to learn equitably with this at the same rates without being put in special education um and told that we are unable to learn so my role my my goal is 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 much you know those things that i thought we had already achieved are now back as a priority um and um you know we are unfortunately um, we're seeing things to, to be regressed. So as a vice chair, I would hope that I could walk hand in hand with Chair Doe um, and, and the staff um, and our community, as he is saying, you know, it's a call to arms and to stand arm in arm, like I did, you know, over 50 years ago with my grandparents and parents again and say, you know, we have already overcome. And so we're going to stay overcome, overcame, overcome, um, and and um, stand for what we know is right because it is right. And now that's my goal, and um, my heart for um, the the position of um, vice chair. Thank you so much, Councilmember Lee, for those thoughts. Okay. So I think we fulfilled what we needed to, to make sure we get a, a vote. Linda, I will turn this part over to you. Let's see if we have. Linda, you're on mute. I'm sorry, Linda, looking? are you going to resend the link then? Yeah. That's up to the chair. How would you like to proceed? Uh, I guess the question is, after hearing all of the candidates, if there's anyone that would like to change their vote. Yeah, that's a good question. And um, Council Member Juasame, did you get the link? I did. Can you please confirm that you've got my vote? So this is I'm sorry, what? Yes, yeah, yeah, and I voted. Can you please confirm if you got it? Uh, the, the system doesn't show me who actually voted for who, who the names are. It's anonymous. Yeah. It's, Especially, I mean, the numbers. If you count it, does it yes, look like I, everybody? Right. Okay. Well, I, yeah. yeah. yeah I, right. And the, and the chair does not vote unless there's a tie. Right. Right. So I'm sending the name of the uh, chair with the information, the new chair to the chair. I'm sending the vice chair information to Chair Doe for him to announce.
Okay, I just got it. All right, so based on the votes, I have here our new vice chair, Council Member Carl Crawford. Okay, Council Member Carl Crawford. Are you still on? Congratulations. Yes. Thank you all for your vote of confidence, and I look forward to working with you all. Thank you. Great, great, great. So what that means, our executive team is, is still is, is, is intact now. Councilmember Carl Crawford is the vice chair. Councilmember Lee remains the secretary. Councilmember Mullins is our treasurer. So that makes up the executive team at this point. Thank you all so much. Really appreciate your patience, allow us to go through this process and we can move forward now with our other reports. Theo, would you like to go next? Uh, sure, sure thing. Thank you, Linda. Uh, good, good evening. Good evening, Chair. Good evening, Council. I have to Apologize, I need to keep off of uh, the video because of some connection issues, so I will be off of video for this report. Um, but basically, I mean, it, it's a just one more here. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I'll just uh, focus the report on the work we did in in July on the affirmative action ruling. Um, we worked with the Asian Council and the Latino Council to put, put out a statement and um, a set of initial recommendations following the Supreme Court ruling against affirmative action. We have two main objectives with this joint effort. Um, one is to provide a general framework about what work on sort of culture, work on um, racial diversity and equity looks like after the decision. and and uh, particularly, we, you know, we push back against the view that the fight for equal protection, the sort of subtext um, in the national conversation right now that the, you know, the fight for equal protection for racial justice is an individual responsibility, um, and particularly the responsibility of people who are disadvantaged by racial inequality. Uh, so so the, the statement uh, for sure pushes back against that. Um, identifying racial diversity and equity as a responsibility of the society as a whole and particularly focus on on um, on leading institutions and the importance of partnering with uh, our historically marginalized communities. Objective two is to provide guidance to policymakers about addressing the needs of our community vis-a-vis -vis racial equity and diversity after the decision, after the, the court decision. And so there we put forward three specific recommendations um, just to, to go to state them at a high level here. One is to reject the false choice of color blindness. Two is that equal protection must match the complexities of systemic racism. And three is that Minnesota must remain steadfast in the work of racial diversity and equity. So those are, those are sort of three mainline points of the recommendations. Um, and you know, the, the next sort of next step in this is that we we plan to do a presentation. We were invited to do a presentation uh, at the University of Minnesota with their diversity. Um, I think the diversity of practice group or organization within the University of Minnesota to, to present the recommendations and have a discussion with them about this issue. Um, another area that I can touch on to close is that, I mean, looking at the research on racial diversity, specifically racial disparities in higher education, the, you know, the sort of research we we put together for this initial statement, uh, two issues emerge in, in terms of thinking about the governance or policy touch points for racial equity and diversity work. One is the structural opportunity gaps within our K through 12 education system. So that that's a specifically an area that uh, when you look at the landscape for 
for um, you know how we how we build after um, the fallout around this decision. Um, you know, really thinking about how we address much more substantively racial um, structural opportunity gaps and inequality of opportunity within our education systems will be crucial because that certainly feeds into um, the, the problems we have with higher education. And number two is really, you know, coming up with much more innovative ways and substantive ways to address the interconnected issues around the racial wealth gap. And so like really, really how we how we move forward um, and think beyond the horizon here um, about how we address generational issues and historical issues regarding um, you know, wealth gaps in our society. So I'll leave it there. Those are those are um, you know the high points of some of the policy issues that we're dealing with. And I will take any questions. Yep. Any questions, for Mr. Rose? Okay, Linda. Uh, thank you. Um, as uh, Theo was speaking, one of the things that I was thinking also is that maybe we can do a little research to see who else is is addressing the affirmative action issue. So we know that the U of M has come out and and made a statement of getting rid of it per you know as they should because that's the court's finding, um, as well as getting rid of the legacy their legacy program. But I'm wondering who else is working on this in this space and whether or not this might be a space where we can also take the lead. So Theo uh, did a good job of getting getting us out there, but maybe it, there might be an opportunity if no one else has done it to convene a group of people to start having some dialogue around it and see if um, there's some additional things that need to be done. So I'm just throwing that that out there and Theo will know more about what's going on after he attends this U of M meeting. So, all right. In terms of the executive director report, a uh, lot of administrative activities. Um, as you've heard from our treasurer, we're coming to the end. We're at the end of the fiscal year, but now we're coming and we've had the soft close and now we're coming to the hard close, which is August 18th. So Ash and I have been working furiously on closing out encumbrances, trying to figure out, okay, are there any outstanding invoices? What's going on with all of that? So just working on getting 2023 uh, closed out. Um, so hats off to Ash. Uh, they've spent a lot of time in that space and it's not necessarily the easiest of tasks to, to get done. Still working on the Hay Study Review Report for the um, review of the executive director's position. Again, once that's done, our plan is to have them review all of the positions uh, within the ethnic councils because we think that um, that maybe, you know, we might be a little underpaid for the, res the level of responsibility. So I would love to get more money for, for the team. I would love to do that because they work they work hard. I uh, completed all the performance reviews. Um, everyone did pretty well. Uh, so that's going along well. And I will share that with the um, the chair uh, tomorrow. Uh, workforce Development Committee. I think I mentioned to you that I'm on the Governor's Workforce Development Committee. And now I am the racial equity chair, so I anticipate that we'll have some of those conversations regarding affirmative action as it uh, rela relates to the corporate environment, which will be key. I did a um, interview a week or so ago on SPNN. I don't think it's aired yet. I will send that out. Just a little 25 minute interview about the council. So it nothing. Has aired, Linda. Oh, Sorry. they did air it? Yeah, okay. I, I shared it on our uh, social media. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's how I know. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> great. So did that and was grateful for that. And as a matter of fact, um, just for those of you who don't know, the SPNN, that's the St. Paul Network, a community um, network, television network. 
Uh, and they did ask me whether or not we would like to have some type of panel discussion that could be aired on their network. And of course, I said yes. So would love to um, get some feedback on what we could possibly do and who might be involved in that. So if you're interested in working on that piece, let me know. Um, I think it's a great opportunity anytime we can get out there, um, get our name out there and have some um, some much needed dialogue so that people will understand, hey, we're we're thinking about these issues. We're not we're not just sitting on these councils just so we can say, oh, I'm on the council. No, we 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 care about what's going on in our in our communities. Um, working on the new position. So again, I'm just so grateful that we did get the appropriation. And that's why you see the 795 as opposed to the 5. 52 or so that we actually had last year as an appro appropriation. So excited about that, working on the job descriptions for that. And just some other miscellaneous administrative things that, that come up at the end of the year, internal controls, recertification. And um, the last thing too is getting that board retreat um, schedule. So we were unable to do it this month because we changed the meeting date. And we wanted to make sure that we, we gave you all enough time so that you could put it on your calendar. So again, it's being held um, September 12th, I believe it is. September 12th, starting at six o'clock, we'll have our regular meeting from six to 6.30. And then Dion Consulting, who worked on the strategic plan uh, a few years ago before I came, will lead us through the second half of that process. And I will make sure that I get you a summary of the first part. So that is kind of it for uh, the executive director's report. And again, we're so excited to work with the council again this year. Um, you guys did some great, great work, just in case I didn't mention that in July, uh, you came to the table, but there's so much more that, um, that can be done and we want to hear your voices. We want to hear the voices from your communities. Um, also, since Ash is not on, on the line, please send us a list of organizations that you believe should be coming forward in front of the board so that we can start getting those scheduled. And then lastly, you will be getting something over the next couple of weeks, probably some type of form. We will be producing business cards for the council so that when when you're out, you will be able to hand them a card uh, because wherever you go, you know, you're representing you, but you're also representing the council and we want you to be proud of that fact. So that's it, Chair Doe, for today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Linda. And I want to thank you too, on behalf of the council in general, I know each person can speak for themselves, and you and the staff, you know, it's a lot of work, like you said, you know, there's a lot of work to be done, and we are just, you know, heading in the direction where it's going to be challenging, but I'm sure, you know, with the effort of everybody and everybody participating and getting involved, we can get things done and look back at the, the accomplishments and the impact, which is the most important thing, the impact, because we're here, if our community is not feeling the impact of what we do, it's almost like, you know, it's it's not happening. It's not happening. So 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 I really appreciate that. And also I appreciate all of our council members. Again, we all bring value to this council and you're here for a purpose. I just want to help us maximize that, let it manifest in something that we're doing to be able to 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 just feel that yes, we we're we're making things happen for our community. Because that is the bottom line. Okay, so I know we're good with time here. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna open it. If there's any announcement, any, any thoughts, any? Uh, I just want to re reiterate to our next meeting. As far as with D Young, it's very important. We want to make sure we wrap up our strategic initiative that we're going to uh, begin. So the, so the work begins after that. Definitely, some action plans putting in place, um, which will be very crucial. To what basically we want to do and uh linda i see here oh mr waters just made a comment here that he will send you some articles from the journal of public economics or something like that so okay okay great any questions any now
know Jude had talked about one already, but any other, anything else going on that we need to know? We can be a part of. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chair. So yeah, I want to appreciate uh, um, Executive Director Linda for the effort uh, she put uh, through this uh, you know, session. I've been able to get uh, more resources, more funding to the council. Uh, that will help us to have more staff and more capabilities, and then to do all the things we say we're going to do. So I want to appreciate you and your staff and the work you guys do. And I also want to appreciate um, uh, my, my friend, uh, um, Council Member Crawford, for being the vice chair. So it's, uh, it's very important that uh, we do the outreach to the uh, rural areas. Uh, we all know that uh, we have a lot of our people in the uh, metro area, but there's, uh, we still have a lot of our people in the rural areas, in the, in the countryside. And uh, you know, I can travel within 45 minutes to multiple cities across Twin Cities and uh, get things done. But those in the rural area, it takes a lot. Um, and especially if you are in one area, you may not have the resources, the collaboration and the opportunities we do those of us in the in the around the Twin Cities. So it's very important and uh, we'll be working with you to achieve your dream. Um, and also, finally, um, I just want to thank everybody for all the work we do at the Council. It's very, very important. So with this in new initiative uh, for some of us um, who have not been all that pretty act active, um, it's very important that all of us be active and participate because we represent uh, the entire Blacks in the state. That's a big deal. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, doing the work is very important to us and also important to our community. Um, the affirmative action is very, very critical. So uh, it's still within the school. But with this lawsuit at, at, in Atlanta, um, I don't even know how this uh, country is going to function if, the spring, if it gets to the Supreme Court and they got it as they've done. Mm -hmm. So how do we you know, pursue to redress all the injustices that have been going on for over 400 years? So it's very unfortunate, but um, for, those that, for those who will be working in that space, any information that we are, you, you find out try to share. It's very important that we know what to do. I was in a, um, in a retreat uh, last year, and um, I told uh, there was um, a professor from uh, Harvard. She was, one of, she was one of the presenters. So after the meeting, I met her and I was asking her and I said, uh, this lawsuit is going to the Supreme Court and knowing the attendants, likely they are going to got affirmative action in school. He said, I know, I know, I, we know it's coming. They already have our plan. So he didn't go in detail to tell me the plan um, because, I mean, the case had not been decided, but now that it's open. So uh, some of them, some of them really do have some plans and uh, it's good to know what others are doing because this is a it's a national disaster and anything we know the better the more we know mm -hmm. the better for us for you know to to get information to our people and mobilize because i think this would be one of the worst things to happen to this country so thank you for uh, all the work everybody does and um, you know we are there to support our people i appreciate that thank you sounds good thank you so much any other comments So thank you, Councillor, for your kind words, and I agree as well. Linda, your team is amazing. We can't thank you enough for the work you do, and looking forward to, to bringing our, our, our journey forward. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'm going to give you back some time tonight, folks. And well, I will let's call share this. now before, yes. before we leave. Can I get a, a list of people who might be interested in having a brief meeting about affirmative action? Once Theo goes to that meeting and comes back with some feedback, I'd love to maybe try to convene a group of people and see, okay, is this something that we kind of want to 
take on and kind of lead the charge. I know that um, in Flock and Me, you know more information about this, that the um, NAACP, and, and maybe it's Theo, is doing something more on a national scale, but maybe we can bring some partners together to have the dialogue and try to get ahead of what's going on as opposed to being reactionary. So I'm just you know, wondering, uh, Council Member Nadi, I already have your name down because you brought it up. But I'm just wondering if, you know, if anybody else is interested, let me know, Put send me an email, put it in the chat. Yeah. Yes, Chair, mm -hmm. uh, and Linda, I'd be interested in that. This is Crawford. Okay. Right. Yeah, I think that's a, that's, a, that's a great thought. You know, be proactive, convene something and and and, and, and let, it, let it get out there to the public, you know, that this is yeah. happening. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I fully support that. Okay. So, and one last thing, Linda, one last thing is, um, well, I guess we can talk about it during the retreat. As far as the repository, and and, and I know you, you are on, embarking on a new website type thing. So, yes, we got to start figuring out a way. How's that going to look like, at least and, to start? And that will be a, a minute because it's, being handled by our, our minute department. And so they're still getting things settled from the previous year. But I will circle back to you guys at the next meeting and let you know what the next steps are. But I think um, in the interim, you know, well, not well, not the interim before this next meeting, but maybe uh, we can start at least thinking about what we would like to include. And then if we have to pare down we can pare down, but they have to put together a, a team and and we're not the only group that set aside money to have their website and, and other techno technological advances occur. So I, I need to find out where we're going to be in the queue and what that process looks like. So I'll get back to you guys on that. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, with that being said, then the meeting is now adjourned and you all are have a good rest of the evening, and we will meet again soon. Thank you. Thank you all. Stay well. All right. All right. Thanks, Thank everyone. you. All right. I am stopping the recording. <laughs>